and of 79 different writers. And in this room today, we have six of us. So every place that we go, writers are stationed. So when we were in Atlanta, we had about 10 writers that were in that area of Atlanta. So Alabama, Tennessee. And some of these sisters don't have any community. So like one sister that's all the way down in Delta, Mississippi. I have yet to meet her yet, but her, st her stories are real. And I'm just like, wow, you need to get on the train system. Just come on up and get on one of these readings. And so now that um, Grits has moved from Texas across all the way to Texas and I'm in New Jersey, it's easier for me to kind of hit this region, this side of the region. So it's been really beautiful to be able to meet up. And this is the first time I'm meeting up with the writers too. So this is our first time meeting um, outside of us submitting the work to each other. So which is a beautiful thing. I'm gonna let Amber Williams say something. Um, yeah, like she said, the internet uh, is a beautiful thing. I haven't worked with music, but just in working with and meeting um, Poet on Watch and seeing what can be done with, um, as far as production with music and albums, the same thing has come across with this book. I mean, we've been able to just, I mean, talk about each other's stories um, online and connect in that way and then also see how we can produce something tangible that we can all you know then eventually share so it's been a beautiful experience it's been a, um, a dramatic experience I don't know how many of you have actually read the whole book <laughs> but um, going through these submissions going through the pieces really brought out a lot for me things that I didn't even realize I had maybe had dealt with you know in coming out or have not dealt with in my life and so the book is really for everyone no matter what stage you're in I'm, I'm 40 you know I'm 40 and either 40, 40 something there you go <laughs> <laughs> or 30 something um, 30 40 so and reading these stories made me you know touch me in places like I said that I didn't even know I had or had not dealt with so it's um it's definitely something that all of us can um, can get from you know actually straight queer whatever the case may be Really, and we have a couple of straight we have people some in allies, the book. Yeah, yes, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, it's women and allies. allies. Yeah, so allies yeah, um, and uh, yeah, I think that from um, for me personally, grits was a way for me to have community. When I decided that I wanted to um, come out in my work, I've been out for 20 years, but not in my work. And, um, and as a news videographer for NBC and then working for newspapers and that type of thing, I'm always doing somebody else's stories, right? But never really document my own story. And then I had a political voice. And so my first book came out, which was Poet on Watch. It was more political, kind of touched on some uh, multicultural, multisexual type of things. And then I was like, you know, my family loved it. They were, it was palatable enough for them, right? And then, um, I got to a point where I was like, if I'm talking about politics, then why I'm not talking about the politics in my bedroom? So for me, it was the, um, it's political erotica for me. Like my new book, The Sage Burner. So when I dropped Sage Burner, I got real nervous. And I started going on readings and I was sweating, like really sweating, like sweating. <laughs> sweating, I said, oh, I got issues. I've been out for 20 years and I'm sweating like this, what is going on with me? Then I said, oh, we gotta finish Grits. Because I needed community. I knew I wasn't by myself. And so Grits has been a real, um, a sister-loving community for me. And, and to hear other women's stories and to hear happy stories. Because a lot of times when we document our stories, we're documented from prevention. Or we're documented out of um, 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 hate, abuse. abuse. You know, these stories came to us and we really wanted to document the joy in our stories, the family in our stories. The, the spirituality in the stories, because the book didn't have chapters until the stories came in. And when the stories came in, the people who, the, when, come here, uh -uh. <laughs> okay. When the stories came in, when the stories came in, the chapters developed themselves. So when the sisters that wanted to start talking about um, spirituality, that's what really ran me through, was the spirituality part and how, um, and how women, we're spiritual, right? And to take God away from us, or whatever you consider what God is for you, um, is traumatic. And I didn't know how traumatic it was for um, particularly Southern women. And I'm reading these stories and it just really, me and Amber cried many nights reading these stories. But they was tears of joy and not just tears of pain, right? So um, we've been getting a lot of questions today about 
anthologies and how to put together stories and what is a valid story. I think that any time that you can um, look at yourself deeply and put it on paper um, is valid. And, um, and if you can lie to yourself on paper, you're only lying to yourself. Not me, or not the reader. It's just you, right? Our introduction was written by Cheryl Clark. Do you know Cheryl Clark? Yes, powerful troublemaker feminist, right? She wrote our introduction, and um, Pamela Sneed wrote the afterword to the book. So we have some sisters that thought this was some really important work, so they put their name to it, and I was really excited. I was like, wow, y'all gonna put your name to this? So up next, so I was excited, you know. It's really nice that sometimes when you sit back and as a, um, a young writer and you're reading these people and you're like, wow, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm gonna get there one day, right? And then all of a sudden, they're endorsing the work. That's, um, that blew me away. So I was like, yes.